This is the most important video you will ever watch. I will be explaining how to become a consistent and profitable day trader. I will be going over how to read, analyze, and execute on candlesticks and candlestick patterns. This video is filled with secret tips and knowledge to help you become a more profitable trader. To get the most value out of this video, make sure to watch the whole thing and let's get right into it. All right, so starting out, the first thing you need to understand is what is a bullish and bearish candlestick. For a bullish candlestick, we open at the low of the candle, we have the body of the candle, and then we close on top of where we opened. In this candle right here, we can see we open at the low, we have the body, and then we close. Of course, we have the lower wick and the higher wick, but for a bullish candle, it's just important to understand you open at the low and you close at the high. Vice versa for a bearish candlestick, we open at the high, we close at the low, and we have the body in between. This is very important to understand as a body is what most of the price action occurs in the body. And we can tell about how the body forms the story behind the chart. Now, before I start, this is some secret sauce. You always want to ensure the close of a candlestick. So whenever you're entering a trade, you want to ensure you're waiting for a close of a candlestick. So whenever you're entering a trade or a trade is nearing your stop loss, you want to wait for the candlestick to close. Too many traders get out of the stock before the candlestick closes, causing them to lose the trade too early and get shaken out for the trade to go make a wick and come right back up. So let's talk about some different candlestick patterns. So neutral candlestick patterns include doji and spinning top candles. A doji stick candle is a neutral candle because this is when a stock has either moved up and down, but it closes in between, meaning that buyers and sellers were able to move the stock both up and down within the candle. Unfortunately, due to the market being in a neutral spot and price being at fair value, the stock does not move and therefore the doji candle closes at a balance of the market. Therefore, there is no imbalance in that candle and there is no edge on a doji candle. Similar to spinning tops, which are very similar to doji candles, it's the same story there. When we're looking at bullish candlestick patterns, my favorite, as many of the people in my private room know, is the hammer candle. This is because what this candle is showing us is that the stock is making a move to the downside. However, on this specific candle here, we moved to the downside, but there was buyers present, let's say at a key level right here, and we were able to bring it back above that key level, showing that there is strong demand in this area for the stock to go and make new highs. This is one of my favorite candlestick patterns as this one I use on a daily basis, a hammer and inverted hammer slash shooting star candle, these two right here. And they help me tremendously when I'm trading because they give me those precision entries that I'm looking for. The next candlestick pattern we have is the inverted hammer. I personally don't like to trade inverted hammer unless we see a bearish shooting star from the upside. And therefore, we're going to ignore this one in this example. The next one is a dragonfly doji. Now, this is the exact same example, essentially a hammer stick, but you can also call this a pin bar as well. This occurs when a stock is moving down. We see buyers trying to bring the stock back up after sellers have pushed it down and buyers cannot bring the stock up to actually create a body like the hammer candle. However, we can bring the stock up where we close it at a neutral spot where the candle opened up originally and therefore we can push the price back. A bullish engulfing on a one minute time frame, for example, will be the same as a hammer candle on the three minute time frame. This is essentially the same thing. We have a small red candle that closed to the downside. However, the bullish engulfing candle, we moved to the downside, broke the previous low, but buyers brought it back up in order to close to the upside and make a bigger move up. The rest of these candles here, I don't trade too much, so I won't be talking about them. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on the hammer candle and the dragonfly doji. For the bearish candlesticks, I personally love to trade the shooting star candle, the gravestone doji candle, and the evening star. The shooting star candle is the same as the hammer candle, but vice versa. Essentially, this is when a stock is moving to the upside, and then we see buyers bringing the stock up, and then there is a level of resistance near that area. Therefore, when sellers come in and enter near that price, we move the stock down, and we actually close the stock 
below the previous open. And this is a great example of those small pullbacks when we're having a trend day to enter into to short the stock in a low risk point. The next one is the Greystone Doji. Same example here from the Dragonfly Doji, except vice versa. And then of course the bearish engulfing, which is the same as a bullish engulfing. Now let's go over to a chart and see how we can use these candlesticks. Now, before we see an example, there is two things I want to mention that are very important. Always try to trade near zones or key levels. This is super important so you do not get caught up in chop. In this example here, we can see a key level of support on pre-market low and pre-market high. And of course, from previous day, we can see a key level zone at 151.67. Now, these are the key levels that this chart has. So near these levels is where we want to trade. We do not want to take trades within the range of these levels. Okay, that is very important because then you will just get chopped around trading. Number two, it is so important to not fight the trend. Let the stock show you a trend and then ride the trend rather than trying to fight the trend and predict the top or bottom. That is the number one reason most new traders end up losing a lot of money trading. So let's play this chart out and see exactly what happens. Right into open, the first thing we see is we came up to this 151.21 level rejected with a strong rejection candle. And then we came back down to the low only to make a doji candle here, which shows a neutral pattern, nor are there buyers or sellers in charge or present here. Therefore, we want to wait for the trend to develop. So far, this is still within a range. All right, so now what do we have? We have a clear sign of downtrend movement. So we want to see if the stock can come back up to 150.22 and show us a weaker candle for us to enter into the trade. All right, off of 151.22s, the first thing that I personally see is two inverted hammer candles. The first inverted hammer candle was good. Unfortunately, this hammer candle, you need to understand to read the story behind each candle. In this one, we open up at 149.83 or the low here. We move all the way up because buyers are trying to push this stock back up. And then sellers came in at 150.22s to close it a little bit below that level. However, we still are bullish on this candle. But then this second candle confirmed that we can enter into a short position. This is due to the fact that when this candle opened, we moved up trying to break that 150.22 level again. However, on this candle, we never came near the level and we actually rejected and closed below the previous candle as well, showing us strong confirmation for a downside. Now, if we are looking to trade this chart, we're looking for psychological numbers. So this 149 psychological number is a great example of where we should be taking profits if we do enter into this trade. For our stop loss, we want to have our stop loss at a break of market structure, and that would essentially be that 150.22 or a break above that and a close, which would be near 150.30s on that previous candle. We enter into the trade here looking for that 149 psych with our stop loss at 150.30s. Now, let's see how this trade plays out. As the trade is playing out, we got two more inverted hammer candles there. In between this range, we don't care about what's happening too much because that's how you get stopped out of most trades is when you start thinking of what's going on in between the range. But one thing I do see is to help us stay in is we need to break below this trend line to show a strong confirmation to the downside. And just like that, we were able to capture that whole move by understanding simple candlestick patterns. Let's go look at one more example. Here we are in another example. So in this example, before the stock opens up the next day, we want to draw out supply and demand zones. I personally use key levels, but supply and demand zones help newer traders. So I want to draw the demand zone here. In this example here, I see a clear supply zone on Apple near this 153.58 level. So we need Apple to either break above or reject this zone. 
I see a clear demand zone near this level right here at 151.50s. So these are my supply and demand zones. If I was to enter in on a rejection of them, I would be looking to play both of these sides here at the highs and lows. Now let's see how Apple opens up with its candlestick patterns to show us if we can look too long or short near these zones. This tip will help increase your win rate as well because now you're looking for patterns near this level. So right into open, the first thing that I see on the candlestick is we have a lot of relative strength to the upside. Now, due to this relative strength and the fact that we broke the supply zone here with a bullish candle, had another bullish candle, and then a third bullish candle shows that this supply zone is now invalidated. And what we really want to look for in this supply zone now is actually flipping it to a demand zone and looking for calls near this level now. So now with our profit target at 155.21s, we want to see if the stock can come back down into our level of support slash demand and see if we can hold this level for a move up. So what we're looking for is essentially a move up, a move back into our zone, and then finally a move to our profit target just like so. And this move will be confirmed with the use of candlestick patterns. Let's play out this chart here. All right, the first thing and major thing is we rejected extremely hard at this 154.50 level. We rejected super hard. And then when we did come into this demand zone here, we have a strong confirmation of a hammer candle. But after this big move down, I personally would not take this trade just because it shows that sellers are in control and this one candle cannot hold the stock up in my opinion and we need more confirmation. All right, so here is great confirmation. We came down, but then look at these two candles, right? This whole time we've been trying to tell stories with this candlestick pattern, and this tells a great story. We came back up, sellers came back into control here, trying to push the stock down, but buyers were able to defend it and close the stock at a new body high. We came back down, sellers trying to break below this demand zone now, but we came back with buyers and made a hammer candle. This one closed red, meaning the opening of this candle and the close was negative. However, on the next candle, we held that previous low from this candle and we closed at a new body high. Therefore, on this candle right here, I would enter the trade looking for that previous high made on the previous pre-market high. And my stop loss would be a break of the previous candle right here, giving me a 3.82 risk to reward trade. Now let's see how this trade plays out. And just like that, we were able to catch that whole move by reading, analyzing and executing on candlestick patterns that are simple near our key zones and following the trend of the market. I hope this video was concise and to the point. I try to keep my videos short and try to provide as much value as possible within the videos. If you guys enjoyed and got value, make sure to leave a like, follow me on Instagram. I make daily education every single day and I'll see you guys next week with a brand new video.